Well, welcome to question five uh, from chapter 14 of Fundamentals of Particle Technology. Uh, and this is all about uh, removal of particulates from gas streams, in this particular case using a spray tower. So uh, we have question five uh, all illustrated just here, written just here. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is slightly unusual in that uh, I'll kick off by actually answering these questions and then um, we'll need to use this equation in order to uh, to answer all these questions but in the second part around about in 10 minutes time I'll actually go through the derivation of this equation I don't like magic equations that just appear, appear out of nowhere so uh, basically what we're looking for it, for the real answer is uh, just here what is the target efficiency and then possibly just here is also important how can we improve the efficiency uh, but the problem is is being broken down into uh, the separate sections in order to get that uh, target efficiency uh, the first part we're looking for the overall collection efficiency uh, the second part, we're looking for the concentration of, oh sorry, the amount of water in the tower at any time, in the spray spray tower at any time. And from that, we're looking for the concentration of the liquid droplets inside the tower. That's because this equation over here has alpha, which is that concentration of the liquid droplets. The single target efficiency is e to s the height of the tire which are actually given the drop size put size which are also given that's 150 microns uh, this is obviously what we're trying to work out in the first part the concentration of, of uh, water inside the tower so that is what the equation is and that is the overall efficiency which is actually the first part so let's do something that should help us with the analysis we don't need a fancy drawing here just a straightforward drawing uh, should help just a little box basically and uh, here is our spray tower and we have flowing into it naught point naught naught nine grams per meter cubed of solids and we have flowing out of it naught point naught naught one three five grams per meter cube so the overall collection efficiency is as simple as that there's no no tricks to this initial one what is the overall collection efficiency well i've got my trusty rather basic calculator and uh, let's work out the fraction of particles actually going through rather than uh, recovered and we'll do one minus so uh, that's the same as uh, 1.35 divided by 9 is 0.15 so 15% is actually leaving, so 85% is, um, is being retained. So clearly we know the collection efficiency, total collection efficiency, is 0.85 or 85%. Okay, and I think that's the answer to uh, part A. The next part is all about calculating the volume of water inside the tank. Um, salient part there is the fact that we have a 30 second residence time. So that's 30 seconds. I'll have to put the S just there. 30 seconds residence time for water drops inside this spray tower. And we're also told that we have a flow rate of 1.5 meters cubed per hour. I'll use the slash this time for hour. Okay, so uh, the 
time fraction is 30 over 3600. 3600. And in that one hour, in that 3600 seconds, we've got 1.5 meters cubed of water. So that gives us a volume of water inside the tank of, uh, let's be lazy and do the full sum, so that's 30 divided by 3600 times by 1.5 uh, 0.5 point, not point not 0.025 one two five meters cubed well that's the volume of water that's inside the tower at any time we now need to know what the volume of the tower is volume of the tower and that is well the dimensions are the tower is 15 meters high so we'll pop that on as well 15 meters high with a diameter of five meters. So five meters across. Okay. So the volume of type tower is going to be pi d squared over four times by L, which is uh, 25 pi, because it's a five meter diameter uh, tank, so 25 pi over 4 times by 15. So the total volume of the tank is 25 times by 15 divided by 4 times by 3.14 equals 294, just over 294 uh, meters cubed, just over 290, whoops, start again, just over 294, oh dear, just over 224 meters cubed. Okay, so as a concentration, uh, it's called alpha s in the equation, we need 0 0.0125 all over 294 meters cubed of water divided by meters cubed total. Uh, okay, so that's 0 0.0125 divided by 2.94 equals 4.25 4.25 times 10 to the minus uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 5. So that's the uh, fraction. Now, let's just check that we are along the right lines. So the first part, we worked out that the collection efficiency was 85%. That's that answer A. We've just worked out that the uh, volume of the water at any one instance in time was uh, that value. And now we're at 4.2 times 10 to the minus 5. OK, so we've got all those values ready for now putting into the uh, the equation. So let's whiz back down again then to the equation which I've uh, put put down here. And we're asked, we're asked for the single uh, target efficiency which is this part in the equation. So obviously we're going to have to do a bit of rearrangement so we know the overall efficiency is 0 0.85. So that's 
1 minus x bar. minus 3 times uh, well that's our 4.2 4.2 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, so that was our alpha term e to s is what we're looking for so we'll have to leave that like that height is 15 meters so we pop that in, 15. Uh, we then have 2 times by 1 minus alpha. I'm not going to bother putting alpha in here for reasons that will become apparent in a moment. Uh, and then x, the particle diameter, which is 150 uh, microns. So that's times 10 to the minus 6. Right, so we need to rearrange this equation for uh, this this term here, this uh, e to s. Let's tidy it up a little bit because that 15 cancels with that 15. That makes this 10 to the minus 5, which immediately cancels with that 10 to the minus 5. Uh, 1 minus alpha s is so small, we don't have to worry about it, really. We, can, we really just have the same as 1 minus x. I uh, see so I'm about to run out of I'll, I'll, I'll put this down so I'll put this down here instead uh, in fact what we'll do is we'll take this over to the left hand side and uh, take the minus sign as well uh, back over to the right so what we now have is 3 times 4.2 eta s all over 2. That's because uh, that's because this bit just here is so small that I'm just going to say uh, it's equal to 1. Alpha s is, is clo close enough to 0 not to worry about it on the bottom because uh, we're taking away there whereas we do need alpha s on the top because we're multiplying so we did, did need that. Now let's sort out the right hand side uh, so that was taking 0.85 to the right hand side so that's now 0.15 and don't forget the minus sign so uh, it's 0 0.15 0 0.15 and the minus sign would go there and in order to remove the x we need to do the natural log so that's natural log so that's 1 Minus 0 0.85 is 0 0.15. Uh, whoops, no, we don't want the minus. We want the minus sign outside there. Good. Okay. Right, so finally we're asked for e to s. So that is 2 times, or minus rather, 2 times the natural log of 0 0.15 divided by 8.6 okay uh, I'm going to need something that can do logs so let me move this this way a bit first so we want uh, the natural log of 0.15 and then we want to do the calculation uh, minus 2 times by that divided by 8.6 Which is not right because I'm make, I can see I've made a mistake. Oh dear, that shouldn't be 8.6 because it's 3 times 
two. Whoops. So three pounds four point two. I think I better. That's twelve point six, isn't it? Twelve point six. Try again. Twelve point six. Twelve point six. That looks better. So going back to the spreadsheet. Uh, do, 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 do. So we had um, should be end do, 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 12 point six, 12 point six. That equals 30, 0 0.30, 0 0.30. Okay, that's the uh, efficiency. So if we just pull back, whoops, to the to the question, the single target efficiency is 0 0.30 or 30 percent. Okay. So how could the overall efficiency be improved? Um, at the moment, we're getting 30% target efficiency. The way the target efficiency could be improved is really shown in this diagram just here. And uh, it's a complicated diagram, but here is the target efficiency, the single target efficiency. Uh, here is the droplet size diameter. We were at about 150 microns, which was which is round about here, I guess. And uh, these are curves for the dust size. Now we're told nothing about the dust size, but you'll notice that regardless of what the dust size is that's being collected, it has a maximum uh, somewhere in the region of. 600 microns to a thousand microns in terms of droplet size okay so sometime somewhere in that region there is the optimal droplet size for collection of dust of any uh, particular diameter and we were currently operating at about that value because we had a 30 percent uh, it's a log scale here so that's that's where 0 0.3 is more or less uh, how could we actually uh, improve that collection efficiency? Well, we could actually move the droplet size to something in the order of 600 microns to 1000 microns. And that would give us uh, a better collection efficiency rather than the 150 microns that we were using as a drop size in the spray tower. And interestingly, rainwater is round about that size. 0 0.6 to 1 millimetre diameter is pretty average raindrop diameter. So rain is a pretty good uh, spray collector of uh, dust. So nature is, has done a fantastic job for removing particulate matter from air courtesy of rain. Okay, so that's the end of the first section. Uh, the next section is all about uh, the, the derivation of the equation for those who want to uh, to see it. Okay, so the derivation of the equation is uh, one that is based on the, the classic uh, input minus output equals accumulation. And uh, if we consider this small but finite distance inside the spray tower, which I've labelled delta z, that's the spatial coordinate up and down the tower, then the amount of uh, dust entering that small but finite value uh, distance is the gas velocity, okay, which would be metres per second, times by the area, which is obviously metres squared, so that now gives you metres cubed per second, and then times by the concentration, where the concentration is in kilograms per meter cubed. So therefore that gives us the units of kilograms per second when we multiply all those terms out. So that's the mass dust flowing into our, well I'm going to use the word differential because it will be, into our differential section. What about the mass flow coming out of the differential section? Well again we'll have the velocity, the area and the concentration 
bearing in mind it's an infinitesimally small uh, change but so that's the output minus this bit here because the output is all of this okay and we've taken out a small amount of dust in that section and that is the gradient of dust the dn dz term is the gradient of dust inside the column and that's over the region of delta z clearly what we're going to do is uh, fix coordinate in time this p becomes not a partial but a, a full differential uh, but for the moment we'll leave it as as that so where are we then uh, if we do input minus output clearly our UGANs cancel out and basically we can write that accumulation is equal to minus the gas velocity UG times by the cross-sectional area of the column uh, and dn the differential of the dust concentration with height over our delta z so that's that's our accumulation term in terms of the material balance the uh, the input minus output approach okay so we've got lots of whiteboard to fill in for the rest of it okay well that's one way of looking at accumulation in gas cleaning devices there is always uh, another equation that's important for accumulation and that's considering what's going on uh, and here it's the the accumulation is going to be the interstitial velocity okay times by the concentration of the dust okay I'll put in concentration of the dust there times by the projected area over which the dust is being collected so that's projected area of the target really projected area times by uh, an efficiency it would be very easy to uh, assume 100% efficiency but as we've seen here the target efficiency was only 30% so we do need to consider the efficiency in our derivation and that is a general equation for dust cleaning well okay now this actually isn't quite as crazy as it sounds because if you consider this lot just here that is the mass flow rate of the dust if the concentration of the dust is in kilograms per meter cubed then uh, all those terms there together give you the mass flow rate of the dust and we're multiplying the mass flow rate of the dust by this efficiency term for collection purposes so you know it's not actually that bizarre equation it's a logic equation really what's the mass flow rate of the dust how much are you collecting in each differential layer simple as that okay so the interstitial velocity is going to be equal to ug over the amount of space that it flows one minus alpha i called it alpha s in the equation before uh, the concentration is straightforward that's n the projected area is always in dust cleaning uh, calculations the difficult thing to work out so we'll have to leave that for the moment and here is our single target collection so I'd better just make this as a this is gen a general dust cleaning equation and it's valid for fabric filters face masks for covid virus you name it it's a, it's a general uh, equation that's valid right the projected area though how do we get the projected area of the target because our targets are spherical particles they're droplets of water right and we want the projected area okay uh, well we know that the 
projected area of a drop is going to be uh, pi d squared over 4. OK, let's park that for the moment because we know that the volume of the drop is going to be pi d cubed over 6. And we also know that the volume of drops present are going to equal uh, alpha area delta x. OK, so both of these terms here are for volume of drops. This one is total volume of drops. Total volume of drops. So the, this we would have to multiply by the number of drops present. So if I call that nd for number of drops present, uh, then that is also total volume of drops. OK, so we know that uh, the total area of drops, likewise, we can put in an nd term here. OK, and that's really what we want. OK, so this is what we really want, the total area of the drops in our differential section. That's what we really want. But we have the volumes. So let's just play around with the volumes a little bit. We know that uh, if we can rearrange that to be the same equation as the area, and by that I mean take this one down here, then we can do a substitution. So let's just do that rearranging. So if we're taking the volume and converting it to that area, we need to take the diameter out, OK? Uh, and then we need to compensate for the fact that we put a 4 in there, whereas we did have a 6 just there. So uh, what we what we could do there is uh, multiply by 4 on the top, seeing so to put 4 on the bottom, but don't forget we already had a 6 just there. So that gives us the total volume of the drops in a form which clearly is split where to the left of that dotted line is in fact the equation for area. And we know that that is equal to the volume that we know, which is as it was before. Excellent, because now we have an equation we can rearrange for the projected area, pi over 4 d squared nd is equal to alpha, the volume, fraction of the drops, times by the volume. And then that will be 6 over 4, if we bring over from the other side. And of course, we've got the drop diameter. So that's just a taking this lot over to the other side of the equation and a little bit of rearrangement. Clearly, that then becomes uh, 3 over 2 alpha a dx over d. So that is our equation for the projected area of the drops in our region of interest. So if we go back up, if I can just get the so that's 3 over 2. So our projected area then, where yeah, we can just make it, is equal to 3 over 2 over 2 alpha a delta x over... Um, I'm going to use... I'm going to convert the drop diameter to x rather than use d because I, that's what was in the equation to start with. So apologies for that slip over there. 
OK, so we have the accumulation equal to these two equations. This one from uh, uh, input output balance. And this one from our general equation, which is just basically saying the mass flow rate times by the efficiency. So let's clear a little bit of space so that I can just put these two together. Uh, so we don't want that anymore. Just get rid of all these. And then carry on with the, uh, the derivation. OK, that's cleared a reasonable amount of space to use. So uh, putting the equation out, we have minus UG A DN DZ delta Z delta Z equals UG 1 minus alpha s n 3 over 2 alpha a all over x the diameter of the drops that is delta x single target efficiency what a lot of cancelling we can do there goes the ugs there goes our uh, Delta Z. Uh, yep, that should have been Z, shouldn't it? Sorry about that. But it's going anyway. Uh, area can also go. And that just leaves us with uh, uh, what were partials, which we'll make into full differentials. So that then becomes minus dn over n equals uh, alpha over 1 minus alpha. OK, they're both subscripted. Um, we've taken the n over to the side. Uh, the 3 over 2 we still have. Let's bring that to the front. 3 over 2. Better put that in brackets. Uh, alpha we've brought to the front, yes. Particle diameter we've still got, and the collection efficiency. So that's the single particle collection efficiency over x. Brilliant. The only thing missing then is the dz term here, which has now become a full differential over here, dz. OK, so if we move down a little bit, a bit more, a bit more space. Uh, and clear a little bit more as well. Get rid of this. Finally, we've got to the equation which we can use because clearly we can integrate this. This will be um, ln n over n naught. I'll move the minus sign over to the other side. In fact, um, yeah, I'll, I'll speed things up a bit actually. Let's get rid of the ln as well. We know we're going to have to apply exponential, so that will become exp. There's the minus 3 alpha s target efficiency dz. We'll integrate dz to the full height, because that will integrate to the full height, so that then becomes h. And that's over 2, 1 minus alpha s particle size. Don't pay any attention to what's over here. Right, 
Well, we're there, aren't we? Because we know the efficiency then, overall efficiency, is 1 minus n over n naught, because that's n over n naught is the fraction remaining in, um, in the air. So 1 minus n over n naught is the fraction collected, just as it has been in our previous gas cleaning uh, derivations. So that therefore is 1 minus exp all this lot, 3 alpha s efficiency height all over 2 1 minus alpha s drop size. Our equation derived from the mass balance which if we can scroll back to the top is what we used before and what we have just here. So we've derived the equation that we've used in the solution. Okay.